mga kathesis? I am Ivan Palencia, the Executive Head of Thesis It, a crash course on thesis writing, and your BCE CSC representative. Welcome to the pilot episode of The Thesis It. Thesis It series will guide undergraduate students, especially the third year students, in thesis writing through recorded videos roughly tackling the structure of the thesis paper, ethics in research, presentation, and a lot more. As we should be both informed consumers and effective producers of research, Thesis It is here for us in promoting background knowledge and understanding and developing skills in writing thesis. In our pilot episode, we will be having the topic Technical Writing, Writing a Research Report. This episode basically tackles about the processes, data, and findings of a systematic investigation. Let us now introduce to you our resource speaker for episode 1, Technical Writing, Writing a Research Report. To do the honors, may I call in Ms. Cecil M. Indaya, the Honorary Chairman of Thesis It, and one of the BUCE CEC representatives. Thank you, Ivan. I am honored today to introduce to the participants our guest speaker for the pilot episode of our This Is It series. Our resource speaker spent her entire career with commendable efforts in her local, national, and international awards such as the following. Graduate of Master of Education, Educational Research Evaluation and Assessment at Flinders University, Australia. Outstanding International Student Awardee by the Government of South Australia. Given the Certificate of Commendation as Outstanding Student by the University Chancellor. Australia Award Scholarship Recipient. Graduated cum laude in Bachelor of Secondary Education major in English. University College of Education, graduated as the most outstanding graduate in leadership and received the Presidential Award Flag for Leadership, outstanding graduate of Nicole University College of Education, outstanding Bachelor of Secondary Education graduate, one of the 10 outstanding students of Nicole Award in year 2015, Regional Award and National Final List of the 10 outstanding students of the Philippines. Year 2015, Regional Finalist to the 10 Outstanding Student Teachers Year 2015, and she is the Research Coordinator of Bicol University College of Education Teaching Research, Professional Education, and English Subjects, a member of the Bicol University Research Ethics Committee, a wife, a sister, and a daughter, and also a volunteer to various youth and faith-related activities. Ladies and gentlemen, let us all give a virtual round of applause to Professor Januari M. D. Chavez. Blessed afternoon, everyone. This afternoon, we will be having our first session, our first episode of your Thesis It series, of course, organized by your uh, college student council. And uh, I am so privileged to be invited to be one of your speakers. And for this session, the topic given to me is to talk about technical writing writing a research report so this crash course on thesis writing will be really helpful to our uh, students specifically our uh, third year students uh, in particular i know that all of you are having your research courses or research subjects and i hope that in one way or another this session could help you or could even increase your current understanding in conducting your research. So before we um, begin, I am, by the way, the current coordinator, the research coordinator of our college. And uh, 
For this afternoon, we will be discussing about technical writing, but only, um, I just wanted to clarify this term because this was the given title to me, and I would like to highlight research as an academic writing. And then, of course, I will focus my discussion on writing a research report and uh, how do we usually evaluate the quality of research a report. So after this lecture discussion, it is uh, my hope and prayer that at least 90% of our student participants will be able to understand the process and importance of research uh, report writing. And then, of course, um, also for this uh, morning, uh, at least we or this afternoon, we also aim that you will be able to identify the significant role that the undergraduate educational researcher play in research and development initiative of the country. We cannot underplay the role that you are actually playing in terms of conducting your undergraduate research. And of course, uh, we will also, it will also be a time for us to review or reflect on your own research experiences and determine uh, your plan of action to a successful uh, research journey in the new normal. So let us now focus on technical writing uh, versus academic writing. Technical writing was the the particular term given to me by the organizers. When we talk of technical writing and academic writing, they are actually both nonfiction writing. However, when we talk of technical writing, uh, most of the time we are referring to technical materials. For example, manuals, instructions, specifications, software doc documentations, even day-to-day -day business operation writing such as correspondence um, you also have your internal communications media releases and other kinds of reports so the from the term itself technical writing if you're going to review its the history of the term it is specifically um, focuses on technical information most of the time it will give you a report on uh, scientific instruments or uh, other forms of communication, technical communications in professional life. So if technical writing focuses on providing detailed and lucid information about a certain product or service, academic writing, on the other hand, focuses on proving a theory or viewpoint in one way or the other. And actually, um, academic writing emphasizes on one specific subject. Technical writing focuses on factual, straightforward content, while academic writing contains uh, contents on specific discipline. And uh, of course, technical writers should have expert knowledge while academic writers have learners knowledge so what are the objectives most of the time the purpose of technical writing is getting something done while uh, academic writing's purpose is to demonstrate what a person knows so um in technical writing definitely the knowledge of topic is more than the reader who is going through it well, in academic writing, the knowledge of topic is less than the teacher who is evaluating the topic. In particular, in your case, your research report uh, will be validated or assessed, evaluated by panelists or even your advisors and teachers. So the audience uh, may be several people for technical writing who belong specifically to the same technical field. However, in academic writing, it could be a teacher, students, or other people uh, related to the particular field. And uh, 
We also use, both of them use graphics, charts, and numbers, but it is highly seen or observed in technical writing. And in technical writing, it follows subject-specific vocabulary, while academic writing uh, focuses on some jargon or also or technical vocabulary. And uh, in academic writing, own or personal point of view may be included. But in technical writing, own point of view is not actually included. So um, we could have uh, your research report then will uh, fall on or fall into academic writing rather than technical writing so that you will not be um, confused as well. I just wanted to clarify this term, but you could read more about technical writing and academic writing. We also have other forms of writing like uh, fiction writing and of course, journalistic writing, but academic writing is most of the time it is a formal and unbiased clear and precise focused and well structured well structured and it's also well sourced it is correct and consistent in our case um academic writing most of the time you write essay research paper thesis research proposal literature review lab report and annotated the bibliography. So as I've mentioned, I will not focus more on technical or academic writing. Let's proceed with the highlight of our discussion for this afternoon. Let's focus on a research report. So according to Cresswell, a research report is actually a completed study that reports an investigation or exploration of a problem identifies questions to be addressed, and includes data collected, analyzed, and interpreted by the researcher. Your research report is composed for audiences. It actually varies in length and format and differs for quantitative and qualitative research. Uh, research. Definitely, when you write your report, may I just remind everyone that you are not just expressing I mean, it is just like in, in oral speech, you are not just expressing, you wanted to communicate. You communicate uh, the result of your uh, study. Most of the time, um, research report is considered as a summary of the research process, which clearly highlights the findings, the recommendations, and other important details that, that um, the, your reader would the like to or you think your reader will actually uh, need or will actually read so most of the time a research report is associated as an informative and uh, based on first-hand verifiable information because as i've mentioned earlier it is based on research it is actually formally structured uh, most of the time, you could see that research report, they have headings, sections, and bullet points. And of course, in your case, your thesis uh, will include recommendations for future actions. So we have different uh, types, actually, or we have different uh, to nature of research. We have actually the qualitative research report and the quantitative research report. So the qualitative research report, as the term goes, it is actually a report written for qualitative research. So most of the, I will be giving you later on the structure for qualitative uh, research report. Uh, this report usually highlights uh, qualitative method and uh, uh it provides actually in educational research, like what we are doing, it uh, qualitative research provides us with an opportunity to apply our knowledge and develop skills in planning and executing uh, qualitative research uh, projects. So since it's a qualitative report, usually it is descriptive in nature and uh, descriptive narrative are, are the common format. The other uh, nature is the quantitative research report. 
the opposite. It deals with quantitative research. So more, most of the time, it reflects systematic investigation that pays attention to, of course, numerical and statistical uh, values to find an uh, answer to a question. But most of them, they have a target audience and uh, they, they carry with them certain uh, criteria. So as I've mentioned, we will be discussing how do we usually evaluate a research report. I will not deal with um, other types like the technical one in business research. Let's focus on your thesis. Okay, so um, most the common structure of a uh, uh, research report will actually vary depending on the types of research report. So um, you have your dissertations and theses. So in your case, um, you will be having, uh, we do dissertations and thesis for graduate uh, students. And now we also have thesis for undergraduate students. Before creating or before uh, having your dissertation and thesis reports or your ma final manuscript, of course, you will write your dissertation and thesis proposals. I know that you are on that stage. If your report will tell you what have you conducted or what happened, your um, dissertation and thesis proposals will reflect what will happen in your research journey. And of course, I will be explicitly sharing with you different structure for qualitative and quantitative dissertation and thesis proposals. We also write uh, journal articles. So different journals have their own author's guide and their own criteria in um, their re uh, report or in their structure. So most of them in social sciences, we follow the APA format. Of course, we also write paper for conference and uh, for a call for proposals. So conference paper and conference proposals. Uh, different organizations will open for a call for proposal and they themselves will establish their own uh, criteria and uh, their um, guidelines in creating or in writing their conference paper. And uh, most of the time as educational researchers, we also um, write report for policy makers or school personnel. And it will be depending on the timing, who are you writing to, uh, that the structure will also vary. So let's focus on uh, the common format for uh, quantitative and qualitative format. Let me just compare. So on the left, portion of your screen that is for the quantitative format and for the right portion will be the um, qualitative format. So in quantitative report, uh, this is for quantitative proposal first. For quantitative proposal, usually you will have your title page, your abstract, the introduction, the statement of the problem, the purpose and research questions or hypothesis, your theoretical perspective, the definition of terms, and the delimitations of the study. And on the qualitative format, most of the time, you will be having your title page, abstract, introduction, statement of the problem, the purpose and research questions, and the limitations. Another part of the proposal for the quantitative, you have your review of the literature, the methods with which includes your study design, the procedures, instruments, reliability, and validity of, of course, your uh, tools, and then data analysis, the preliminary results, potential and potential eth ethical issues. Also, you include the timeline, budget, and preliminary chapter outline. Of course, don't forget your references and appendices. On the other hand, for the qualitative format for proposal, you also have your pro procedure, 
you will also write the qualitative methodology and design, which is actually uh, important in the qualitative format. You have your research site and purposeful sampling. You have your data analysis procedures. You have the researcher's role and potential ethical issues and the methods of validation. You will also write your preliminary findings, the anticipated outcomes of the study, and tentative literature review, and then, of course, timeline, budget, and preliminary chapter outline, and your references and appendices as well. So depending on your proposal format, uh, these are the uh, common uh, features or um, what we usually include in our uh, research proposal. And uh, the Bicol University, uh, currently actually, we don't have yet um, the modified guidelines, but we have an existing uh, format based on an existing board resolution. So what is actually included in our existing format is uh, the same. You also have your preliminary pages, but we follow the, not the, the traditional format, which is only two chapters for the proposal, but the three chapter approach. You have your background, the introduction or the problem, and the, uh, you also have your literature review, which is most of the time. We included in your review are the related literature, related studies. And then you also have your conceptual framework, theoretical framework, synthesis, gap bridge, and of course, the conceptual and operational definition. And then you also have your methodology and the design you are going to use. So don't worry, we will be having our orientation for that. Uh, during the um, webinar for your advisors and, and panelists. And I know that your research teachers already shared with you our existing uh, guidelines for our undergraduate uh, research. Okay. So um, the next one that I would like to share with you is actually the research report structure so that was your proposal structure this is your research report structure so what do we usually include in the research report so for a quantitative research report structure if you are dealing with qualitative data qualitative or, or quantitative data and quantitative findings usually you will see the title page the abstract of the study, and you also have your body of the paper. In the body of the paper, you have your um, title page, I, I mean the introduction, which includes the statement of the problem, your purpose statement, the research questions or hypothesis, your uh, theoretical or conceptual explanation, the review of uh, literature under which you will be having the review of the previous research and you will be having the summary of major themes and then how will your present study extend literature you also have your methods the sample and site the access and permissions the instruments and their reliability and validity and of course, if it's experimental, you will also write about the interventions used and uh, the procedures of data collection and analysis of data. And you will also now write no, the results of your study. Most of the time in quantitative research report, you have your descriptive analysis of all data. You will also have your inferential analysis to address questions or hypotheses. And of course, you usually have 
or you, you will usually see tables and figures to display the data. In the discussion, you will have the summary of major results, the relationships of results to existing studies. Don't forget to write the limitations of your study and the implications for future research. And we also write the overall significance of the study. In the end of our research report, we write references and appendices. So this is a common uh, structure in writing our research report. Um, don't forget again that we have a certain guidelines. So we are not yet writing based on our design in the college, but sooner or later we will be uh, also uh, considering that, specifically adapting the APA 7 format in writing our research report. So we also have different forms in uh, writing our uh, qualitative research report. So if in, in quantitative, it is actually straightforward. Um, most of the time, we write what we have actually uh, observed or what we have actually find out in our uh, research. So in um, qualitative uh, research report, considering that um, we have a different format in or different design or model in writing your uh, qualitative research report, what is uh, important is to understand considering alternative forms of writing. Usually, qualitative research report in general, you will read uh, most of the time like six to eight chapters in their reports. That's how extensive the report of qualitative research should be. So, um, but we have alternatives. So, we have the scientific approach in research report uh, writing. When we talk of a uh, scientific uh, research report, we are looking actually into, you know, similar to a quantitative study. Um, in a scientific approach, most of the five sections are present. Like, you know, you have your introduction, review of the literature, uh, methods, results, and discussion. And uh, the next approach in uh, qualitative research is actually the um, storytelling approach. In storytelling approach, you could have varied structure. Um, the author in storytelling approach uses literary devices and persuasive creative writing to present the study. So most of the time, seasoned qualitative researchers used the storytelling approach. They use um, analogies, um, metaphors, plot, and climax in the presentation of their qualitative research. We also we can also encounter the thematic approach. Under the thematic approach, it usually includes extensive discussion about the major uh, major themes of uh, the study. It uh, analyzes or presents the analysis of the qualitative database. So um, most of the time you can see in qualitative report extensive quotes and rich details to support the themes. And uh, oftentimes these themes are actually interrelated and uh, incorporated within a specific qualitative design. So... Um, you can choose or like if you have read a grounded theory, ethnography, or a narrative research design. So usually the approach in writing the report is thematic. We also have the uh, descriptive approach. Under the descriptive approach, 
it actually incorporates a uh, description, descriptive approach. Most of the time, it describes uh, the people, the places, of course, which carry or who carry the narrative. So the descriptive approach typically convey a typical day in the life of an individual. Others also have or others also consider theoretical approach. This approach in, in writing qualitative research report, I don't know how many of you will be writing a qualitative research, um, but this approach um, is where is uh, employed when the researcher starts with a theory. Like, for example, um, a theoretically oriented case study, if you're doing a case study. Or um, the researcher ends with a theory, like in a grounded uh, theory approach. Or um, when you modify a theory based on the existing views of your participants. And the last approach that uh, qualitative researchers um, employ in their research report is the experimental alternative or performance approach. It is usually a report in the form of a poem, a fictional story, a drama, or a highly personalized account. Like if you want to read about the study of Denzen in 1997 and Richardson in 2001, in 2000, um, they call this particular uh, approach or this particular uh, report in qualitative research as autoethnography. So instead of writing a standard research report, you, for example, develop a play. Uh, I think Bikaed uh, students will, like, for example, will develop a dance or a song or a play which captures the unruly, multi seated and emotionally laden subject matter. So better than standard writing, uh, for example, Bikaed students, because I am teaching culture and arts research, uh, some of them will be creating a dance literature, will explore festivals. So definitely their approach will be experimental or alternative or performance approach. So although qualitative reports vary from uh, the traditional uh, theory scientific approach, um, we could also see that uh, both of them include detailed procedures of inquiry. So um, the same in qualitative and quantitative, they need to actually report uh, the findings of their uh, study. So um, what is the usual structure of a qualitative scientific uh, research report? So um, this is the common structure. So you have your title page for the front matter. You have your preference and acknowledgement, the table of contents. You have your list of tables, list of figures, abstract of the study. In the body of the paper, you have your introduction, the statement of the problem, purpose statement, and research questions. And uh, you also have your procedures, the rational for qualitative approach, the sample and site, access and permissions, the same with a quantitative structure. You have your data gathering strategies. And here you will write about your data analysis approach. And then, of course, you present now your findings. We're in, in the presentation of the findings, you need to have a comprehensive description of site or individuals and analysis of themes. And of course, in the discussion, you uh, write major findings. You compare now your findings with existing studies. You write the limitations of your study, the implications for future research, and of course, the overall significance of the study. Of course, don't you will not forget to write about your references and the appendices, like the figures, interviews, and other protocols. 
as I've mentioned earlier, other experts in qualitative research, they employ the storytelling approach. And usually in qualitative storytelling structure, in the front matter, the same with the scientific structure, but in the body of the paper, the focus is on the specific description of individual of interest in the study, the author's relation or connection to the participant, the data collected during the study, a specific incident to understand the individual's life, the meaning of the incident, larger understanding of the group of people to which individual belongs, a comparison of the meaning with published studies, and of course, return to author's uh, personal meaning of the individual and events. And of course, your references. We have also um, just a tip for you, my dear researchers. When you are writing your report, don't forget to really always look into um, what is expected of your paper based on the design that you adapted. And don't forget to write in a sensitive, ethical, and scholarly way. So I'll be discussing that in episode two about academic integrity, in particular, uh, plagiarism and intellectual property. Okay, so in quantitative uh, research, so again, the left portion of your paper um, will focus on the criteria or quality criteria in quantitative research and on the uh, right portion is actually the quality criteria in qualitative research. So if you are look, going to look, um, the first one in the quality principles, this is adapted from, from back. Uh, the reference is actually at the end of my presentation. So the first quality principle is the truth value of evidence. The truth value of evidence in quantitative research refers to internal validity. The internal validity is, of course, we all know this, the extent to which observed effects can be attributed to the independent variable. The truth value of evidence in uh, qualitative research is on credibility. The extent to which the study's findings are trustworthy and believable to others. The second quality principle is actually applicability of evidence. So um, if in quantitative, in the truth value, it's internal validity. For the applicability, it's external validity. External validity refers to the extent to which the results can be generalized from the research sample to the population. So usually, uh, quantitative researchers use random or stratified sampling, and they replicate their study in another context, and they verify predicted relationships. So that is usually how they enhance quality and quantitative research. The applicability of evidence for qualitative research, the, the quality criteria is transferability. This is the extent to which the findings can be transferred or applied in different settings. So you usually describe your context in detail. Usually it's a thick description of your, you know, case sampling strategy or maximum variation sampling. And, uh, you know, you discuss the results in different settings. That's why you usually compare them with other research. And then the next one is consistency of evidence. So usually in quantitative, it's reliability. The extent to which the results are consistent if the study would be replicated. In the qualitative research, it's dependability. The extent to which the findings are consistent in relation to the context in which they were generated. This is where we usually report our findings. Like, for example, we collect data repeatedly until there no new themes actually emerge. 
So we continuously analyze the data from data collection. That's how we do in qualitative. We re-examine and we are actually flexible in terms of processing our data. So in, in quantitative, it's more on internal consistency, repeated measures. They have ways of measuring it. They have, I think, the generalizability theory, if I'm not mistaken. And they usually have the item response theory. And the last criteria based on this reference is the neutrality of evidence. So for quantitative research, that's objectivity, meaning the extent to which personal biases are removed and value-free information is gathered. Usually what uh, quantitative researchers do, they use blinded assessors or coders during data gathering. Of course, they anonymize the respondents. And they just allow or let the facts speak for themselves. And they maintain and safeguard original data for accountability to journals and the public. In qualitative research, the criteria, quality criteria is confirmability. The extent to which the findings are based on the study's participant setting instead of the researcher's biases. So what we do, we disconfirm our findings with existing literature. We discuss the process with our peers. We keep a diary or we call them memoing in qualitative research. And you document your steps. And of course, don't forget reflexivity and uh, um, your, uh, usually we validate them by triangulating our methods and data. So um, uh, before I uh, proceed with the uh, last, uh, the remaining slides um, for this short uh, discussion, uh, may I just remind everybody, no? don't forget to, re to read guidelines. Even if you enroll for your master's degree in the future or post uh, doctorate degree, don't forget that in academic writing, it is always your uh, the preliminary material or the front matter, the body of the report, and then the back matter of the supplementary material. So just ask your questions if each portion are actually, you know, they are um, the report actually um, adhered to the guidelines or the criteria. For example, the research proposal will be graded based on the um, forty percent for the uh, substance, and then uh, another forty percent for the defense, and twenty percent for the format. So just be mindful of uh, really outlining uh, the body of your result uh, report in particular. So don't forget to polish your report. Write drafts and check and recheck. So um, the last thing that I would like to remind everybody is on writing to report versus writing uh, to learn. So as I've mentioned, because I have introduced to you different uh, um, writing um structures or report writing structures in particular, may I just encourage everyone that um, in the in report writing, as mentioned by uh, Kofi and Atkinson, some people are actually, you know, I will just write my report after I conducted everything and after I gathered the data. It's just like, I will start writing once I'm done with everything or every procedure. That is actually writing to report. But when you consider uh, another way or another view of writing, meaning writing as analysis, um, writing becomes your way of knowing. So that is actually writing to learn. We're in Writing becomes now an integral part of your uh, research analysis. So um, writing to learn is actually common in qualitative research. 
and uh, but you know it can also have a uh, portion in your quantitative study as Kofi and Atkinson mentioned the net effect of recent development is that we cannot approach the research task of writing app as straightforward we have to approach it as an analytical task so in which our reports and presentation is as powerful and as significant as our content okay so that is uh writing to report versus writing to learn so it's up to you my uh, dear uh, students on how are you going to approach your uh, report uh, writing okay so um maybe that is that's it for me this afternoon for your episode one tune in for episode two i have been given 30 minutes but i think i have uh gotten over time for my presentation so these are the references that you could work or look into about uh, writing a research report so if you have any question please don't forget to email me and i will respond to you once able so thank you so much and congratulations everyone may you have a great uh learning and research journey in the new normal God bless everybody. Thank you. I guess we have reached the conclusion of our episode as much as we would like to extend this great discussion. Thank you for being with us for our Thesis It pilot episode, Mom January. We now come to the awarding of the Certificate of Appreciation as a way for the Council to further express its gratitude to our resource speaker. The certificate reads, Republic of the Philippines, Bicol University, College of Education, College Student Council, Academic Year 2021 to 2022. The Certificate of Appreciation is hereby awarded to Professor January M. De Chavez In grateful acknowledgement of her distinguished and invaluable expertise rendered as the resource speaker for the Episode 1, Technical Writing, Writing a Research Report during the pre-recorded webinar entitled Thesis It, a Crash Course on Thesis Writing held on October 28, 2021. Given this 28th day of October 2021. Signed, Dr. Lorna M. Minya, Dean, Bicol University College of Education. Madam January, it is an honor to award you this certificate. QR code and link to the Thesis It, a crash course on thesis writing pilot episode evaluation form are now shown on your screen. A friendly reminder that completing this evaluation form signifies your attendance at the event and your ticket to obtaining your certificate of participation. The evaluation form will be available until October 31, 2021, and the Certificate of Participation will be sent 30 to 45 days after the evaluation form link is closed. That's it for our Thesis in. On behalf of the BUCE College Student Council, I would like to thank everyone for joining us in the pilot episode of Thesis It series. Special thanks to Madam January for her expertise shared in the talk. Make sure to follow the official social media accounts of the BCE College Student Council and we will see you in our next Thesis It episode.